All right, let's talk about Docker. I feel like it's one of the more abstract concepts to understand when you're new to cloud engineering, especially if you don't have a background in infrastructure and or operations. Whereas if you did, it would be a lot easier for you to understand why uh, a, a standard like Docker is so, so helpful. Especially if you're like imaging virtual machines, if you have sysadmin experience, you're imaging virtual machines and you're installing things one by one each and every time to match a specification, you understand why Docker is just so powerful. Later on in a couple of other videos, we can talk more about Kubernetes and the concept of microservices and I guess uh, distributed architectures, things like that. But today I just wanna give you more concrete examples as to why Docker matters. With all that being said, hi, I'm GPS. I do cloud things at Microsoft here on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop a comment for the algorithm. Help me out. I try to keep these videos sponsor free so I don't have to uh, shill you a shitty VPN. <laughs> uh, and welcome to a new video. All right, so let's just move into ScallyDraw first. And let's say this is my NAS, right? If you didn't check out my last video, uh, do check it out. It's just setting up a little home lab, right? So my, my NAS has an OS that is Linux based. I'm not 100% sure what it's called, but it does have an OS. And essentially it is a, something that I could make changes to directly, right? I could go in here and do things like add packages or add services, restart it, whatever we want to, right? But the reality is that this is a terrible thing to do because your entire bare metal hardware and lower level software depend on the sort of health and the just having a solid operating system. Uh, so everything else that's installed and like depends on it works, right? So this is why having Docker, so we'll, we'll edit this here. And this is why having Docker, right? So we'll have like, We'll call this Docker, right? Installed. And then we can just have little containers running here. And we can, containers can be different sizes. Uh, some of them can talk to each other if needed. Yeah, like this one can talk to this one if needed. And then some of them can have uh, data out, uh, data in. And then you can go ahead and add all of your whatever it is that you want to add to your containers individually. Like some, you may add specific packages, some you may not. And that way, when you need to make any changes, if you need to restart, if you need to delete it and just create another one, you can do that without having to worry about your other services. And more importantly, your bare metal, which at scale becomes a data center being impacted, right? But what does this look like in a more concrete uh, example? Okay, so I have my Synology, um, Yes, I'm open here and I'm going to show you, I'm going to create a container, right? We're going to uh, use just a Debian image and I'm, we can just call it Debian one. That's totally fine. Actually, we'll call it Debian demo and then hit next. And you do have a wizard here to configure additional things, but I'm not going to do any of that, right? Now you may or may not know this, but if you are installing sort of just like a bare Debian image, there's not a lot on here. Like I'm pretty sure that uh, if I try to type in curl here, it, it literally says, curl command not found, right? And curl is something pretty important. Uh, something like SSH, it's not on here either. Something, even something like sudo, like a lot of us take for granted, like, oh, sudo is just something that's available. Like, no, it's actually a package that needs to be installed. And that's like one of the most amazing things of Linux is how customizable it can be. But the downside is you do need to make it match whatever specification that you need it to match, right? So if I wanted to SSH into this, I, I couldn't, right? Because it's, it's not available on here, right? So what I can do is I'm going to create a new project, create here. And actually, I, I want to create a new project. I'm going to call this Debian, Debian project. And I'm going to select a, a project that I already have here. Select and use an existing Docker Compose YAML. Yes, we're going to hit OK there. And first, I'm just going to open this up in a VS Code and kind of talk to you a little bit about what this looks like. When you create a new project in this wizard, it allows you to leverage a Docker Compose and a Docker file, which allows us to specify all those things that I was mentioning that we need, right? So for example, 
our Docker Compose points us to this Docker file. And it also has a couple of DNS records in here. And it tells us also to expose port 2222 to port 22. And if I move into the Docker file that I'm telling it to leverage, you see here, oh, initially it's installing some necessary packages. It's creating a new user, setting a temporary password, and then allows the uh, user to SSH into it and exposes port 22. And there's a couple of other things going on, right? So you can already see that. Now, if I hit next, uh, this path's already used, enter another path. Oh, hold on. I might need to delete this one here. Action delete, and then go back here. We'll create another project again. Debian project, and we'll set that path here. Docker Debian project demo, that should work fine. Next, next, done. All right. Now you can see that because that Docker file and that Docker Compose gives us the ability to say this, this, this. Now, if I go into here and I click into the terminal, it looks like here, and I click into the uh, terminal, uh, it might still be setting some stuff up though. Can I click on, hold on. Let me click on logs. Oh, uh, looks like it's fine. Let's go into terminal. And then I should be able to, I don't, do I, did I specify curl in here? I can't remember if I did curl. Yes, curl. So you see now if I do curl, it's not telling us the command's not found. It's telling us, oh, curl dash dash help, right? If I do SSH, uh, it's in here as well. And because I mapped this to port 22, I should be able to do SSH, GPS, uh, the IP of my thing and port 20. There we go. And then the temporary password one, two, three, I think. And then it tells me it's required to change my password. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh wait, it asked for my current password. Temporary password one, two, three, right? And then we can set a new one and another one. And okay, now we can SSH into that, provide the new password. And here we are, we see that we are actually in that container. And you see the difference between using that initial container that just based Debian latest one versus this one, the leveraging Docker Compose and a Docker file, how much time I save instead of having to manually add all those packages from scratch. This is just a, the most basic example. Later on, we can take a look at like how to network um, uh, containers together and how you can have containers use other services and things like that. This is what I want you to understand of having a standard like Docker enables so many possibilities and it's so much fun. If you have a Raspberry Pi or like a, or like a laptop, like a spare laptop around, I would highly recommend like throw Docker on it, create a bunch of containers, play around with it and SSH from like your machine, like your main machine into it. Like I'm doing like this, this Windows terminal is open on my local uh, computer and um, it's not it's not a terminal inside of the, the Synology app, right? You can learn so much. We can take a look at like firewall rules and all this kind of stuff that you need to have configured correctly with Docker. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a concrete example as to why it matters. All right, if you learned something, let me know. I'll see you in the next video.